Yeah, what other people was good. And today is going to be about the hijab controversy in Elon. Uh, the hijab controversy in the whole of Kwara State. You know, it's actually in the whole of Kwara State, but particularly Elon. Right? Um, let's talk about how it got, got started. You know, it started when the Christian officials or the Christian staffs of um, Baptist Secondary School in Suliri, right, they refused to allow the Muslim uh, the Muslim girls or who are students of that school to enter with their hijab. You know, it led to uh, a lot of fight and it led to crisis and violence, you know, and there was a religious clash between the Muslims and the Christians. Number one is that, according to the claim of the, you know, of the Christian and the Christian staffs, is that the ownership of those schools, right, is still, uh, is still waiting for justice in the Supreme Court, right? Whether it is, whether it actually belongs to uh, the missionaries or the government. But the point is, the government is paying the salaries. Hmm? The government is managing the schools. The government is making policies about what happens and what doesn't happen in those schools. So those staffs, were they there when, uh, when the missionaries were in charge? If they are not there, hmm? and the government is the boss, the missionaries didn't employ most of these teachers that were uh, that were here, and they are uh, and and they are pushing for uh, that they are pushing for religious violence. Hmm? The missionaries didn't employ them. The government employed most of them. The ones that missionary the, that the missionaries actually employed would have been out of service by now, probably. It was 1974. You see, I think Nigeria. Uh, I just hope there are no political there are no political stunts to this thing, right? So far, there, there are no political stunts to it. Um, what the what those Christians were saying, it doesn't make any sense. It's a government school and it belongs to everybody, right? So if you are now talking about okay, they are going to use hijab or not? The government has said people can use hijab, right? In every government school, right? The government is paying the salary, and the government says you should allow them. So what's your problem? You are even an, you are even an employed staff. If you know you want to promote Christianity, you have to go and start your own Christian school. But this is a government school. How would you? But the point is that I think the government, the Kwara State government, couldn't. Uh, they couldn't face this. Uh, they couldn't face this. Uh, how do I call it? This misconduct. You know, they couldn't face it squarely, mm? and they are trying to balance things on both sides. That you know, these students they can use their hijab, right? But it's not supposed to cause fight. Uh, you know, according to the claim of the of the Christians, you know, the case that is in front of the of, of the Supreme Court, since it hasn't been, you know, since it hasn't been decided or uh, judgment hasn't been passed, you know, so the author the point is that the government is paying the salaries, the government is managing those schools, the government is, take, is taking the risk of those schools, right? The responsibility of those schools are on the government, right? After the Supreme Court's judgment, then these people can take over. These people can, the school can go back to the missionaries, but the school is with the government. I think what those, what those words mean, what those teachers actually did is actually nonsense. What they did was nonsense, and they are, I think they are they are looking for a way to fuel religious crisis. They are looking for a way to fuel religious crisis. And um, the second thing I want to discuss here is that when we're talking about religious crisis, a Muslim uh, uh, is Islam and Christianity the only religion in Nigeria. So why they clash all the time? Hmm? How is Muslim and Christian like? Why are the Babala woes and the Ogun worshippers and the Shongo worshippers like? They are the ones who were in Yoruba land before. Even in the Hausa land, they are no, they were not Muslims until until the uh, until the words the name came. All the all these caliphates till the uh, till the time Usman Danfodi and people like him came mm, to bring Islam to them. They were not Muslims. So what are we talking about? If these guys are not tolerant enough. The people who brought Islam and Christianity wouldn't have been able to, uh, wouldn't have been able to propagate their own religions. So I think um, being liberal sometimes have, it's have negative effects. Hmm? I'm a Muslim, but I have to say it. Uh, I'm a Muslim, but this is about governmental issues and political issues. Huh? How we are going to have a better country. 
Hmm? Not how we are going to grow Islam to be better, not how we are going to grow uh, Christianity to be better, right? The talk, the topic right now is how the Muslim, the Christians and every other religion can live together in peace. Hmm? So why, the, why is it all about Islamic and Christianity all the time? Hmm? I think both sides, the Muslims and the Christians, right? I think they are playing on the fact that it has been, it has been these two religions that has been dominant. Right, and there is really a religious intolerance in in a lot of people, in a lot of Christians, in a lot of Muslims as well. So uh, the government has to be in any religious conversation, in any any religious decision. Right, the people who are traditional worshippers, the traditionalists, the Babalawos, and all these people, hmm? the Ogun worshippers, the Songo or Shun worshippers. They are usually left out, and this is one of the reasons for religious crisis. Why? Because it is like a PDP APC thing, and every other person doesn't have a voice. Hmm? If we can divide these religious voices, hmm? if we can divide it, and just uh, you know, if we can divide it very well and um, share it equally among them. Even though the, the traditional worshippers may not have the numbers, as a matter of fact, and policy is all about the numbers. Hmm? Especially democracy is all about numbers. Hmm? Uh, the politicians are looking for votes. The imams can deliver that, the pastors can deliver that. But the Babala was right, they are not holding anyone at ransom. They are not, they don't have this group, this big church, this big mosque, this. Um, uh, you know this uh, congre these big congregations that they need, you know, to convince uh, to convince the people mm, to vote for a certain politician. They don't have those things. Mm? But the point is because they don't have those things, mm, they have been adding value to the society to their through their liberal the liberalism, right? Not forcing their religion down pe other people's throats, mm? and not trying to counter other people's religion for no reason. Hmm? So if we, if the government and politicians are are, are are doing things and they are giving, uh, they are giving all the political relevance, right, and political consideration hmm, that they want to give to any any religious body, they are giving it to the Muslims and Christians alone. I'm telling you, there will never going to, there is never going to be a, a, a there's there's never going to be a unified, um, what's the name? There's never going to be, uh, you know. A, a united voice hmm, about good issues and at every opportunity everybody, everybody will be trying to promote the interest of his religion hmm? if you are talking about okay should we establish this university here the muslim will say oh it is close to one uh, it, it is going to favor the christian more than the muslims the muslims are going to say it's going to favor. look if there are about five religions that are you know that are going to determine most of these decisions not that they are going to make these decisions for the for, for the politician or or for the or, or for the government authority or the person in charge of power in, in the person in power maybe the governor or the president right but the fact is that mm, the these governors and presidents and senators and whatever they used to consider the voice and the opinion of these religious leaders right, so that they don't offend them because by offending them they are going to offend their people too and yet and I think they are overdoing that. I think they are overdoing that, and if they can reduce that, I think um, that is really, really going to um, reduce um, the occurrence of a religious crisis in this country. So that's all I've got to say. That's all I've got to say. Um, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna see you some other time. Subscribe.